Chelsea have just drawn 2 all to Brentford. A game where we've ultimately scraped that result. It wasn't good enough. Again, Pochettino's got a lot of his tactics wrong. We saw Enzo Fernandez arguably have one of the better first halves he's had. And then an absolute shocker of a second half. There's now a lot of question marks for me over him. There's a lot of question marks in general around the club right now. What is going on at Chelsea Football Club? Well, we're going to get into it. But before we do, I need to remind you to thumbs up this video. Give it a like because that really helps me out and helps the channel out a lot. If you're new, make sure to subscribe. It's great to have you in. We're on the road to 2,500 subscribers. And if you can be part of that, I'd appreciate it an awful lot. Let me know in, your, in the comments down below your thoughts because I want to know what you think are the biggest problems at Chelsea right now because I think there's so many. I think we've got issues with the board, we've got issues with the players, we've got issues with the manager for sure and that's where we're going to start. Pochettino got things wrong against Brentford yesterday. Simple as. He went three at the back, that caused issues. Now I actually think this three at the back system with the personnel and the players that we have could be really good. I think it could be really effective with this Chelsea team. But you can't just say, look, we're playing three at the back today, change up everything that's worked at times this season and think this is going to be the answer and expect results because ultimately that didn't happen. In the first half, I think it shocked Brentford. Come half time, Thomas Frank was astute enough tactically to change things up and nullify Chelsea's threat from that three at the back system that we had yesterday. And that's why we saw Enzo Fernandez fall off a lot in the second half because Norgard completely screened him out of the game. We saw incompetent defensive uh, performances from a number of our centre-backs. We saw a lack of width and urgency from one side in terms of our wing backs. We saw a striker that missed an open goal and then scored a fantastic header. And we saw Cole Palmer again misused and played out of position. And ultimately, he wasn't able to have the effect on the game until we reverted back to a four. But the problem I have with Pochettino is he gets it all so wrong. Then the other manager changes it to, to put his team on the path to winning. That's what happened with Brentford. They went 2-1 up. And then Poch has to be reactionary. And his substitutions are reactionary. And his methods are reactionary. We set up yesterday to match Brentford because he's reactionary to what might happen. And this is my biggest concern because when you're with a team and you win, and you win titles and you win trophies, you set up in a way that's going to win you the game. And you're not reactionary really to what's going on with the other teams. And this is my biggest concern right now. And Pochettino is saying he's not worried about his relationship with the fans. Well, yesterday turned toxic. Yesterday was bad. Yesterday's the worst I've heard it in a long time, since Rafa Benitez, I'd say. People want him out. And we're a month away from when Chelsea parted with Potter. And that was too late last year, and the season fizzled out. We've got a potential FA Cup run here in front of us. And if we can get someone in that's a winner, or even a caretaker that can come in and just gel this team and the fans back together, we might all be able to get together as a club and try and make something happen. Because right now, with Pochettino in charge, you can kiss goodbye to any chance of having any success at Wembley, or even getting there. You can kiss goodbye to a European place in the league, and you can kiss goodbye to any camaraderie or togetherness at Chelsea Football Club. And I'll tell you what, the board should be worried because... If nothing's done about Pochettino and how bad it is, soon enough, and they're already doing it to be fair, the Chelsea fans will start to turn against the board. And look, the board are here for a long time and there's nothing we can do about it. They're going to be here. The only thing I think we can do is potentially remind them of the club that they've taken over and the size of the project that they have on their hands and the way they've started isn't acceptable. That's all we can do as fans. We can't have them out. We can't have out protests because nothing will change. They've signed and they've committed for this amount of time. What we need to do is say, look, if you're going to be part of Chelsea Football Club, then you need to communicate with us because the the sheer lack of communication we're getting between the board and the fans, it's not good enough. They're going to hike up prices of the tickets next season. On what reason? On what evidence? One abysmal, dismal day out at a cup final, they're going to up ticket prices. It's not on. And that's what's going to happen. It's pretty much confirmed. There's another few things that the board have done which isn't acceptable with the performances we're getting from the players at the moment and the managing staff. It's just not good enough. So there's a lot of issues here. And this is why I think Chelsea fans are so confused because we've bought all this talent, which 
everyone is hoping one day is good enough to win the Premier League. We've spent a lot of money on that. We've got a manager in who everyone's hoping that if we give him time, it might be okay. But ultimately, he's showing that even with the limited time that he's had, he might not be good enough. And everyone's kind of hoping that ultimately the board eventually get it right and learn from their mistakes. And no one really knows what direction to pull in as a fan base. And that's why I saw yesterday fans turning against fans. And it's not good. Fans aren't happy with different things. And everyone thinks one problem is bigger than the other. Let me tell you where to start. You start by sacking the manager because the manager's not good enough and we're not going to get results. If you get results and you get wins, it's easier to take certain things. It's easier to take mistakes from the board. It's easier to take price hikes in terms of ticket prices because it's matched with success on the pitch and they can kind of move together a little bit seamlessly and a bit smoother. If things aren't going well in a number of areas, everything's a little bit harder to take. So get results on the pitch first. If you are to sack this manager right now and results don't change with a fair enough period of time with a manager who's the right manager and he gets a pre-season and he gets a chance like Poch has had with this squad right now I think it's a fair amount of time to judge whether or not this squad of players is ever going to be good enough and they would have had they would probably be into their second season by that point let's not forget that this isn't the same Chelsea as last season. A lot of players have gone. A lot of players have moved on. And a lot of players are ultimately new to Chelsea Football Club. And I think that does mean something. But right about now, they should be starting to get it, I'd say. So within the next year, I feel like you can really start to judge whether this squad of players is good enough. And I actually think that's why in January not signing anyone is a bit of a blessing because it allows the squad to gel a little bit and you really start to see who's going to be reliable, who offers what to this squad of players and see who's good enough. It's There's no point feeding more and more players into this squad that already isn't gelled. Okay, And I actually think it's almost a smart move not to sign anyone, to give the manager and the squad a bit of time and we can evaluate. But right now, I think the manager's shown that he's not good enough. So he has to go first. Then we assess the players and we see where we stand with that. And then after the players move on or they they move upwards in terms of how they've been performing for Chelsea Football Club, then we can make fair assessments of them because I think you can judge how effective a manager will be before you can judge how effective the players can be. Because sometimes players take a few years more to adapt. So a manager, they'll show traits early on whether or not they're going to, they're going to be a suitable fit for the club doesn't always mean they're a better manager because they go elsewhere and be the perfect fit and it all works out. Simeone's one to take note of, by the way. He had a few spells before he went to Atletico Madrid where it was absolutely awful. And then he found his fit and look what he's done for that club. He's been a great manager for them. He's consistently kept them as the third best team in Spain. Like He's drawn the gap between the rest of the league, them, and then Barcelona and Real Madrid. So ultimately, it's all about the fit. And I think this is what people forget is that the fans call for the likes of Jose Mourinho because Jose Mourinho fits Chelsea Football Club and what the fans expect. That's what people forget. That's what people who haven't been around long enough don't really realise. You say Jose Mourinho's done, Jose Mourinho's finished. Jose Mourinho and Chelsea are a good fit, whether you like it or not. Something clicked there between the fans, the club, the manager. It did. And ultimately, it hasn't happened in the new era. And I'm not being the biggest advocate here, but... I think Jose Mourinho would get a better tune out of these players than what Pochettino does. And you can say he's washed and you can say he's finished, but I genuinely think he would. But right now, this is the point in the season where a change needs to happen. Because if it doesn't happen yet, and it doesn't happen now, Chelsea Football Club will be left behind again and another season will be wasted. Because Potter was a month too late. We gave him March and look what happened. It was It was awful. He has to go now, and you don't go and bring in Lampard. You, that's not the answer. You fix this now. Apparently, Todd Bowley's taken a step back, and Egg Barley is the person who's in charge and running things because he's the one attending games. He's the one that's got to get it right. He has to. And and leaving it till April, the season will be done. It will be finished, and we'll just have we'll be limping out of the season, and we'll be limping out of that. If you do it now, which and it should have happened sooner we might have a chance of some sort of trophy or European football next season if it can click with someone coming in. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think is our biggest problem? Do you think the players aren't good enough or do you think Pochettino is is obviously not good enough and the players 
could do way better. Because I think that's the case. I think the players in this squad could do a lot better than what they're doing right now under Pochettino. I will hopefully have another video up before our next game because that's nine days away. So tune in for that and I will I will see you in the next one.